Well, time to do a modern Apex kit. And this kit is going to be the subject of a few videos because obviously I'm going to build it. But this video will serve as a kind of inbox review of all the parts and things like that. Um, issued as a brand new tooling by Apex in September 2015 is this 148 scale kit of the Albion AM463 three point refueling truck. Um, issued in 148 scale, it was Airfix's second foray into uh, 148 scale RAF ground support vehicles. The first vehicle they issued in the set was the 148 scale Bedford MWD. And this is the second one. It was issued to complement the 148 scale aircraft kits. And about the same time, they also did a 148 scale Mark 1 Spitfire and a Mark 1 Hurricane. And they also do a set of 10 RAF multipose ground crew figures. So you can make a diorama. Anyway, this is the AM463 Albion refueling truck. AM indicates it's an air ministry pattern of chassis and cab. Originally introduced in 1934 as an ambulance, they also made three-point refueling trucks, so-called because there's three booms on it that come out in kind of that style fashion so you can refuel three aircraft at the same time. They also made them in the vans, tractors and the like, so there's numerous conversion possibilities. Um, if you've never built a modern Airfix kit, then I suggest you do give these a try. This one has about 113 parts and um, do give the modern airfix kit a try because if you like me cut your teeth on the old RAF refuel and set the horrible airfix panther tank where you could never get the suspension to sit properly the even more horrible m4 sherman tank with the tracks that always rotted off that those sort of things even though they couldn't be produced kits are a far cry from these things because what i like about these now is there's no flashing at all they are very, very crisply molded, nicely detailed, and the instruction sheet is a world away from the old Airfix instruction sheets. It's almost 3D graphic-like in a way. Um, so we'll take a look at the contents in this video, and then we'll do a couple of build videos a bit later on. When this was a new kit in September 2015, its issue price was £16.99. Now, on the likes of eBay, you can buy them for between £10.99 plus postage to £15 plus postage, depending on where you get it from. If you import one from the likes of Germany, for example, it'll cost you £10 plus another £10 postage. This particular one I got for £10.99 in the local art shop, believe it or not. We don't really have a model shop in my area anymore, so I found this in the art shop, so I thought, yeah, I'll have a go at that. What, another feature about the kit is it's got pausable front wheel steering and also it's got a really good engine detail and you can leave the bonnet sides off if you choose to do so. Plus it's also got pausable doors as well. So it's a far cry from the old Airfix kits if they issue one like this. Um, this is the first time that the kit has ever been issued as an Albion AM463. Um, I don't think any other company ever did it. So currently, this is Airfix's, not brand new, it's from September 2015, but it's their brand new tool and it hasn't been picked up by another company as yet. No doubt it will in years to come become a vintage kit, but it's one of those Airfix models that's currently freely available. So if you're into military vehicles, not strictly a military vehicle because the military never actually used them, it was exclusively an RAF vehicle, but if you're into these sort of vehicles, it is worthwhile getting one because the detail is, is stunning. So we'll take a look in this video at the box and the contents of it. So just bear with me a second. So, Albion 3 point refueler, 148 scale. And we have some computer graphics of various details. Hornby Hobbies 2015. And it comes in one, uh, one colour scheme on the sheet. Royal Air Force 1940. 
Blurb on it, by the outbreak of World War II, over 400 Albion 3.0 fuelers were in use with the RAF both in Europe and the Far East and Middle East. Many went to France with the RAF in 1940 and suffered a similar fate to the vehicles of the British Army being abandoned on the run back to Dunkirk. Those that remained gave sterling service during the Battle of Britain, helping to quickly refuel fighters in between sorties, the three refuelling hoses drastically cutting down the time needed. And it gives the Humbrol paints that you need. 26, 30, 33, 85, and 86. So, upon opening the box, which is a little bit fiddly to do, we have a plastic bag that the contents come in. We'll dispense with that. So, what we have are one, two, three, four sprues of parts the glazing sprue with uh, headlights etc windscreen in a different plastic bag we have the decals which aren't bad it gives a civilian number plate which is correct for the period and you also have the brilliant instruction sheet which we'll take a look at but this is the the rear tanker body and it's parts with a with a cab door really cleanly crisply molded exhaust that's the kind of internal pump mechanism that goes in the back of the tanker body rear mud guards wings rear doors for the tanker body the the three refueling booms really nicely detailed so that's one sprue the other sprue is the chassis bonnet side and springs a nice touch is that the front wings are molded directly to the chassis they're not a separate part which is an excellent thing to see because no doubt as a separate bit they would be extremely fiddly to fit nice detail on the springs the engines molded in two halves bonnet top springs if we turn it around louvered bonnet sides that's the front axle and you can either cement the front wheels in the, the forward position or at an angle to indicate them being turned so that's the other sprue next sprue is the radiator grill the other engine half I mean, the only thing that lets it down which isn't really a problem is that the badge on the front of the radiator grill does ape the Albion badge but it doesn't actually say Albion on it so again the various engine bits cab doors handbrake gear stick and again no flashing of any description whatsoever the fan molded direct to the inside of the radiator grill and then the last sprue are the wheels tires hubs cab floor cab back cab roof sides in which the passenger door opens the driver's door doesn't open because it has a molding on it for the spare tire to go on but the passenger door does open wheels are molded as one piece which is nice to see really nice hubs you can't really get the hubs mixed up because those are the back ones those are the front ones and if we turn it over the front ones have these kind of weird indentations in them so you can pose the front wheels prior to gluing them in position really nicely done 
very very impressed by it instruction sheet and as I say it's a far cry from the older Airfix things almost three dimensional in effect stages one and two putting the springs to the chassis three putting the engine together four fitting the engine transmission drive etc little diagram showing where it should go five fitting the engine starting handle axle assemblies prop shaft stage 10 front axle all in the side bits 11 12 13 and 14 to the fuel tank 15 more engine detail 16 again more engine detail 17 exhaust pipe 18 rear wings 19 wheels and tires indicating make your mind up time whether you want the front wheel straight or paused 20 cab back 21 cab floor putting the two assemblies together 23 all the internal fittings 24 glazing 25 steering wheel 26 putting the assemblies together cab side cab side and glazing cab roof hose to the back fitting the cab to the chassis then from here on it's the tanker body so when you get to this point here when you get it all constructed you can make your mind up you know do you want to build it straight from the boxes of the tanker or do you want to keep it like that to convert it into another body style um, for example um, through this book here one of the body styles is that's that's the ambulance version so originally they were ordered as them but then they were some were built into the fuel and truck so it's various possibilities then we go on to the actual refueling body itself the internal pump mechanism for the back of the vehicle how it fits into place then you have the tanker body how the two components fit together boards that cover the back of the chassis running boards how the tanker body fits the back of the vehicle fitting the grill to the vehicle and again separate bonnet sides separate bonnet tops so theoretically perhaps using a, an airfix mark one spitfire or hurricane you could presumably use it as a, a kind of post dunkirk abandoned vehicle you could maybe leave the bonnet sides off as though the british have destroyed it like you see in the newsreels brush guard fits to the front then you have the spare wheel to the side the door and again make your mind up time do you want the door cemented in the open or closed position the tanker body back doors they come as one piece but there's a thin line down it so you can break it in two to have them partially paused open or shut or you can have them fully open so you can see the internals of the pump mechanism 51 are the lights 52 and 53 are the various bits and pieces for the refueling booms 54 55 is how to fit them do you want them fit, fitted in the stored position or do you want them fitted in the refueling position in that position or do you want them fitted in the refueling position in that position so it gives you multiple choices anywhere the color scheme is one for the Royal Air Force 1940 and the colours are suggested 30 matte dark green 33 matte black and 86 matte light olive so this is kind of an inbox review so we'll do a build some other time